Hello again everyone, this is Mr. Alba Ronan here, and today I am here for my second breakdown of Mirio Togata. Mainly because the first one sounded like crap. So here's another one. Okay, I will basically be rephrasing everything, so if you've already watched the first one and you were able to watch it despite the awful audio, um, it, this will be mostly the same. I'll ha add a few more advanced techniques that I've found over time with it. But, anyways, overall, Miro's playstyle, I would definitely say, is a counter, a reactionary counter character, if that's a type of character at all. Um, mainly because he has about four buttons that can work as counter attacks in some way or another. And they all lead into decent damage or just are like great counters in all different ways. So let's just get into his buttons. His regular attack string is this four hitting attack string. You can dash cancel after any button, but you usually aren't going to be doing the last hit because it sends them flying pretty far and it isn't the most damage you can get from these combos. Uh, his air combo string is a three hitting attack string once again, you're not often going to be doing the last hit, mainly because well, you don't get anything after it, it's just a splat to the ground. And it's not the biggest damage you can get off of his, uh, like ending a combo. So now his red attack is this really great long range, I think you can hit from about here. He just <laughs> zooms forward and frogs you in the stomach. And it leads into combos which is the sign of a great <laughs> red attack. So it's very long ranged, it has decent speed, it's a little bit slow, pretty reactable because the red happens right at the beginning and then he goes into the animation. But other than that, it's really good like long range, you know, you can use it in mix-ups, if you're on block and go into that, you know, it, do it does its job as a red move and it's very well, uh, has very good range for a red attack. Yeah. Okay, now for his yellow attacks, or his tilt attacks, or his counter, or armor attacks, whatever you call them. His ground one is a two-hitting move that leaves the opponent bouncing. It does good damage, and it's what you'll see most Mirios using as their combo extender in some way. And it can also be cancelled into other quirk buttons. So it's a good combo center in that way as well. His air, oh, and you, you can also combo into it, which is important because it makes it a good combo extender. For him. His air yellow attack or his tilt attack is this just like uppercut thing that just brings him into the air. Its purpose is mainly you can combo into it and out of it. Uh, you can use quirk buttons after it. So basically, it's just used as a combo extender when you're at the end of your air combo. So you can use that into one of his other quirk buttons instead of going into that. Into the, the floor splat thing. Okay, now for his quirk one. We're already starting off with his amazing counter attacks. I'm sure if you've ever played online you've seen Mirio's like try and spam this ability. Just <laughs> keep continuously pressing it. Because unlike armor attacks, like this one, which have armor, and if Bakugo was attacking me with his yellow attack or his counter attack, see how counter attacks break each other. See, and if he did his first, then he would have beaten me, or if he did a red attack, it would beat me. And he, and if I'm doing, like, when I'm attacking Bakugo while he does it, he takes damage while he goes in it, but not with this, with his quirk one. He's completely invincible, as you'd expect from his quirk permeation. Nothing can touch him. He's completely invincible for the duration that you hold it down. And it, you can hold it down for a surprisingly long amount of time. It's about three seconds or something. So it's really good if, like, you know, you're against a crazy opponent, you think they're going to press a button, and you just... <laughs> Why did he take so long to do that? Hello, Bakugo, what are you doing? So yeah, you react to them doing something, and then after the like attack is over, then you can release it with this punch to get a solid 4,000 damage for them trying to press a button. You are completely invincible during it. And it's also just a very damaging um, combo ender that you can use sometimes, and it's also uh, one of his main tools for getting wall splats. 
Yeah, and you also use it in combos for getting good meterless damage. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, to get decent damage, you, you know, just off doing simple things. So yeah, that's the first of his quirk attacks, and by no mo no means is it bad, but its main downfall is that you can't do anything after it, except uh, release this strike, so that's what makes it uh, fair, and if someone blocks this strike at the end, then you are fully punishable very easily if they just smash X after they block it. So you can't just doing this w out willy-nilly, because if you're against a smart opponent, they'll just hold block as soon as they see you turn invincible. So you want to be using it as a counter, not a way of getting in, because they'll block it and it's you. So you want to be doing it as a counter, so if they attack, then you do this and then attack them. Um, there are ways of cancelling the, uh, the... <laughs> the, the, the punch animation. But they're quite difficult. There you go. So if you're holding down the button and then you call out the support and release it, then actually it's not that difficult. You just have to know what you're doing. So you press out the support and then while the animation of him doing the like calling the listening thingy, you um release the button while that's happening. So if I you know I have the hot button held down press the support and release it while he's in that animation, and then you don't have to go in with the punch. And that's just a safe way of cancelling it, say if you've pressed it, pressed it accidentally or something, or you predicted that they would do something, and then they didn't, uh, instead of having to release and go into this unsafe attack, you can, because uh, be, they're just going to be standing there blocking, you call your support, you can probably even go in if you have, if you, if you say, use Nezure. You can get combos after it, or if they, they're blocking because now you pull out a support and they're like, oh, that's weird. You can get a red move if they block it. <laughs> so yeah, that's the main way you can cancel it. And when you have this active, you can run around and do whatever you'd normally do, and then release the button. And as I said, it's then can cancel it by using a support and releasing it during the animation of the support. Oh. So yeah, that's his quirk one. Pretty complex already, and I've only covered one of his quirk buttons. Now, for his tilt quirk one, it is this underground swimming uppercut move, where he goes underground, is completely invincible. As you can see, as, as almost as soon as you press the button, that's something similar with his quirk one as well. As soon as you press the button, he turns invincible. It's practically frame one. It might be uh, four or five frames, but it's almost instant that he turns it invincible. So you can really easily reactionarily, if you see, it, see them doing anything, you can react by uh, pressing quirk one. The same works for quirk two, because you can see even before he goes underground, he has his invincible state on. And obviously when he's underground, he's invincible as well. The only time when you can hit him sometimes is if your opponent is doing like a, a multi-hitting move when you come up and you get hit by one of their attacks before you uppercut them, that's the one way people can counter it. Like sometimes Uraraka's uh, spinning home run meteor blow, uh, if I use that against Mirios, if they're doing this a lot, because one of the, the hits of the meteor blow spinning thing uh, hits, hits him out of this. And this is also used as a combo extender because it can be dash cancelled. So, which is really good, so if I'm over here and, you know, Baku, or oh, say I'm against a Toga or someone throwing projectiles and things, and I know they're going to throw a projectile, I can go underground and punish them for using their projectile, countering them and, oh, and getting a full combo. That you can do more damage if you don't fail like me under pressure. So yeah, that's basically this move. It can be used as a combo extender. Um, I can show how it's used as a combo extender here, since we've covered all these buttons. So it's used in your main bread and butter combos that you do. You cancel it after his yellow attack, and then dash cancel out of it. So yeah, it's a great combo extender, and it can be a great combo starter if you catch someone full screen not ready to block this. 
Um, also, it can be ca you can cancel the uppercut hit, which, as you can expect, the uppercut is very unsafe. Actually, it's not as unsafe as I would like it to be. A lot of Mirios can just mash after they, like, teleport up and the person blocked it, and then they just mash buttons and then you beat the person that blocked it. Here, I'll put, uh, Bakugo on block. Oops. A lot of people, they're not ready to punish it. The, the main way you punish it is kind of like Toga's, Toga's um, armor attack. The way you punish it is you have to jump in the air instantly and and attack. So kind of like I am here. So jump and then attack as soon as you're off the ground. Like jump and attack. So then your character will uh, run, uh, like attack towards him in the air. But yeah, this move is really... <laughs> A lot of people don't end up punishing it, and you can like dash away to try and remove their punish, like try and avoid their. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, you can avoid their punish, and it's not that bad. But if you, they are being consistent at punishing it. What I'm trying to get to is that you can cancel the uppercut by holding down the block button while you come up, and then he just goes underground and then reappears. And that, this is really good for catching your opponent off guard, a lot of people are not ready for that. And then nothing happens, and then all of a sudden you're just in their face, and they're like, wait, what, aren't you gonna do an attack? And then you can go into some pressure with his other buttons. So yeah, that's a really good way of mixing it up. You can even use it, like, on block, because they're like, oh, what an idiot, you tried to go for this move on block, it's so unsafe. And then if you do this, and then you cancel it, and you can go again, and they don't know when you're gonna actually be released and do the whole thing and then if they think you're gonna cancel it and they get hit by it then they're getting hit by this whole easy combo here. and also this move can be done in the air and it's basically the exact same just like his quirk one it can also be done in the air so yeah these moves are both very good counter moves that have a lot of application this one's good for combos and this one is just good at countering as like full-on countering and having a fast way to react to something and punish it for 4,000 damage. Okay, now for his quirk 2, which is this string, similar, I, I guess it resembles a lot of quirk 2 strings like uh, shoot style Deku's or something where it's just three hits it, it's not a crazy combo extender or anything because they get sent flying so far but it's the damaging thing that you use to end most of your combos. And yeah, essentially it's just that it's a combo ender that does a lot of damage and can lead to wall splats. So if I go... You can see it's very easily... Um, used for getting wall splats. And... I mean, that's basically in a, in a nutshell. You can cancel it off of his tilt quirk one, uh, his tilt attack in the air, and that's how you're gonna get end most of your combos. And yeah, it does a lot of damage. It can lead to wall splat. That's basically it. It's just <laughs> a wall splatting combo ending attack string. <clears throat> and it works the same in the air, obviously. Okay, so now for his tilt quirk two. This is another interesting counter move, which is really interesting. I don't think there's anything else like this in the game. Um, if I was wearing his hero outfit, he actually has his cape around him at the beginning animation, and that is to signify that he's actually invincible at the, uh, at the s in the start animation. So I'll get Bakugo try and get him to attack me. Oh my god. <laughs> So you can see the beginning there. Why does he attack so late? See, it's, it's almost like he's guarding. It ha as the guard like animation sparks come up, and you can't be hit while he's doing that, unless it's by another red move. Even armor moves will be blocked by this. So it's very interesting because you can see it's a red move, which might look weird to you because why can you block a red move? Like, aren't their point is to be unblockable, not to block. Well, I mean, yes, that's a good point, but that's what makes this move interesting. So, as you can tell, it has really slow startup animation. It's not something that you're just gonna throw out 
Actually, I do bad. Exposed. I like to cancel it after this, you know, for an unblockable attack. But it's you're not going to be throwing it out and expecting people to just like stand there and block it. And be like, oh, because, you know, the sidestep mechanic, people are going to sidestep or something. But actually, I'm going to see if I can show it. It's actually pretty good at um chasing down sidesteps as well. Actually, I don't know if I can do that. But its main use is... If you see me in any of my online videos, a lot of the time I do it on Wake Up because it's so slow. It doesn't matter if your opponent's going to do a delayed Wake Up or if they get up instantly and try and attack you or something, because that's the kind of mix-up that people do when you're waking up. It's either if they're just going to like instantly get up and press buttons, or if they're going to like stand and block what you're going to do. But this covers either option, which is really amazing. So if they just wake up mashing buttons like a lot of players do, you will block the, the first few things that they do, and if it is timed right, then you'll be, you will hit them with the red part and be able to dash cancel or some decent damage. And if they are, do block, then and if they don't react to the red move, then obviously you're hitting them with the red move. It's unblockable. And you obviously get the damage as well. So that's what's really interesting about this move. Even though it's slow and a lot of people think it's bad, I think it's actually really great. I use it on wake up. So see, Bakugo has slow wake up there. Oh, I didn't actually manage to hit him as he woke up. But I'll walk up to them and do this. And if they're gonna mash buttons, I will win. And if they block and I just like sit there, I will win. It's it win-win unless they sidestep or run away or something. It's really great. And as I showed it, it leads to pretty decent damage. And that's basically this move. It's another one of his interesting counter moves, and you can also just use it in the neutral. Like I was showing with Bakugo, you know, if you're just like running around and you think they're gonna run in for their attack, you can just be running around and then you go in for this, and then it'll absorb their attack, and then you get an up. Uh, to punish it with this weapon. Oops. So Bakugo just ran in, and I think I predicted he's gonna do buttons like he is. Sometimes you can get hit, as you were seeing just then, like if their um, attacks hit you right as you go in for the grab, you can be hit. But nonetheless, it's still really great for countering buttons. And a lot of the time, if they see this coming and they've realized they've attacked, they're gonna be like, oh my god, wait, what? They're blocking me, and then they're gonna block, and then they get hit by the red move either way. So it's really good, and it can be used in the air as well. So, for that reason, sometimes if I ever accidentally get this, I'll late cancel into this move, because they're probably gonna be mashing buttons or blocking or something. And people aren't usually ready for that. Okay, that's basically all of Mirio's buttons that took a while, because they're all really interesting. Now let's get to his combos. So, as I showed you earlier, his bread and butter that you'll see most people doing is this. Which ends in a meaty blow. And so what the buttons are is it's three attacks, his armor move... Oops, sorry. We stopped glitching. So three attacks into armor move, into tilt quirk one, quick dash cancel into two attacks, armor move, and then quirk two string. And it does 9,900 damage, which is pretty decent for one dash cancel. It's pretty average damage, same as what most characters get. And yeah, it's very achievable, it's not hard to execute or anything. You know, I just messed it up while saying that. Uh, you can get consistent 9,000 damage when playing online. Now, as you see, it ends in a Meteor Blow, which uh, hopefully you know what that means by now. I've explained it in a bunch of my other videos, but essentially it means you can't continue combos afterwards, which means no wall splats and no dash cancels. So if you do think you want to get a wall splat, if you're in a uh, very wall-surrounded um, stage, and you're banking on getting lots of wall splats for more damage, because obviously you get a lot more damage if you get a wall splat, um, I suggest ending, instead of ending your combos in attack, attack, armor attack, 
into Quirk 2 string, which is good on its own, but it'll meteor blow after your regular combo uh, moves. If you've just gone into your regular combo like this, into this, and you've realized you want a wall splat now, instead of ending with the tilt attack into Quirk 2, just end it with Quirk 1. That punch, because it's really good at getting wall splats. As you can see here, that wasn't a full combo, but uh, I was just demonstrating how it, it's really good at getting wall splats. So yeah, if you're facing a wall, and you've like gone into your combos with the armor move and the this. Go into this, and you'll get easy wall splats and a lot of extended damage. Usually, you're not going to be able to get that much after your wall splat because the uh, meteor blow counter is still there. But I suggest just going to a red attack, to a few attacks, into maybe his quirk two string to get some decent damage from there. And if you're looking to get, if you're in the air and you've done something, you can obviously do this, because his Quark 2 string is really good at getting uh, wall splats as well, as you can see here. But just make sure if you've done his regular combo strings with these two attacks mainly, because they count towards his meteor blow effect. Just make sure you haven't done some of them, so if you just do his armor attack, into attack, attack, to his Quark 2 string, that'll be fine, and you can get a wall splat. But if you use any more, then you won't be able to get it. That's why I usually suggest just going for this Quirk 1, because it doesn't have the same amount of Meteor Blow effect as other moves of his. So if you did a full combo into that here, I'll try and get Bakugo in this direction so I can get a combo into a Wall Splat. This isn't the best stage for demonstrating, but I'll try and show. So if I go... There we go. What a good demonstration. And then you get some good combos including a wall spot if you end in Quark 1. And as you saw before, you can basically do the same combo if you catch someone with this. You just do two attacks into this. And that does decent damage for a projectile full screen combo starter. Uh, projectile counter and full screen combo starter. And that's basically all you do with his combos. You know, you just dash cancel and go into the that similar progression. You either end in Quirk 1 for the wall splat, or tilt attack into his Quirk 2 string for damage. So two attacks, armor attack, and Quirk 2 string, more damage, two attacks, Quirk 1, wall splat. Okay. Now for his plus ultra combos, this is actually where it gets really interesting. So his plus ultra one is this high damaging free hit move that seems like you can nearly get a combo off of, and I'm talking for no sidekicks here. So if you get it in a string here, you can you're so close to be being able to get a combo off of it because he's able to like run towards and nearly hit them, but it just doesn't quite work, even if they're on recovery. But luckily this isn't an issue for Mirio, because his Quirk 2 string has a lot of traveling in it, so if you combo into his Quirk 2 string, you'll be really close to a wall, and if you're near a wall and do your level 1, that's when you can easily combo off of it. If you're right beside the wall, uh, if the wall's in front of you or to your side, you can basically always combo off of his plus ultra 1, which is really great, I'll show you here. Oh, oops, wait, that was wrong, I'll show that again. There we go, 17,000 damage for a plus ultra and one dash cancel, that is pretty amazing. <laughs> It's a lot more damage than a lot of characters can usually get from their plus ultra one. So that usually works almost no matter how big the stage, because this is actually quite a large stage in itself. If you do yeah, three attacks into his quirk two string, you'll be very close to a wall almost no matter where you are, unless you're unlucky in like facing the middle. But yeah, just make sure you know what 
you're aware of your surroundings, so if you can do this into your plus ultra, you can get a lot more damage than you would just on its own. There we go, 16 and a half thousand for no dash cancel. Just a plus ultra one is pretty, pretty awesome. Okay, and this can also be, uh, if you are in the unfortunate situation that you are like behind your opponent and your back's to the wall, like this, you can still get the combo, but you'll have to use some kind of sidekick attack. So say here if I use Nezure, Oops. But as you see there, it's effectively does the same thing, it just has the sidekick involved. And you bring out the sidekick almost like right after the second hit. Okay, I messed that up. That'll do about 16, 17,000 damage. And it, it, yeah, it's very damaging. And you can do that one wherever you are on the screen. Even though you can usually do this one almost all the time, because there's always walls. And this one will require using a uh, sidekick. Which is really amazing. I love doing that so much. People are not ready for that at all online. Um, and that amazing combo almost makes his uh, plus ultra 2 almost irrelevant because the damage you get from it is like practically the same. See, obviously does a bit more um because it's a plus ultra too but the damage isn't that extraordinary it, it is a big chunk of damage, so don't get me wrong, it's great for ending out a round and, or making a comeback or something, just making sure your opponent's not going to escape from whatever you do. Unless, I say it's not extraordinary damage, unless you do some kind of uh, extended ground combo with your sidekicks. So with Mirio, you can extend his combos by using a sidekick like Nezure or... What's that other one that people like to use? Jiro or... or, 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 or my goodness, my mind's gone blank. The Illusion Girl. Oh, what's her name? I completely... Kami, Kami. People use Kami or Jiro or Nezure to extend combos, and the same works for Miria. So what I find works best is three hits into his work two string. And then you can go into his attacks, into his quirk two string again. But you don't want to end it or else it'll be a meter blow. And that amazing combo is what brings you close to the Fable uh, 24,000 damage, which is pretty amazing for a single combo basically taking out your whole enemy's health bar. So you don't even have to do a plus ultra 2 if you're using uh, Nishrei as a sidekick extender. She is also just useful, you know, if you want to have extended combos on the ground. To get a bit more damage than he usually does. And, I mean, you can do this as much as you like, because Nishrei comes back pretty quickly. So by the time you finish your combo, you've probably gotten your meter back already. So yeah, that's a good way, and it's still only one dash cancel of extending his combos uh, to get more damage, since he does about average damage, but if you use this, uh, he gets above average damage. You don't mess it up like I clearly enjoy doing. <laughs> Oops, I did the dash cancel there. Beastor, I, I did before, it does about 12,000 damage for a regular combo using this. <laughs> oh my god. 
Come on, come on, just one more time. Oh, why didn't you run? One more, one more, one more. Last one, last one. I didn't even bring out Nesrit, what am I doing? Anyways, I did it early, so it does about 12,000 damage. You can use supports to extend his combos this way by bringing them out. Uh, after the first hit and before the second hit of his Quirk 2 string hits. So there we go, and that's pretty easy damage. And then you can catch Lin to his plus ultra 2 or anything to get a lot more damage. Anyways, this, ex com <laughs> this video has been pretty long. Oh, wait, th no, there's one thing I want to show beforehand. So if I go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2... Oh! Wait, I did it! Oh my god, wait, wait, wait. 1, 2, 3, 1... Oh no, wait, this might not work. Oh, wait, if I just went into his Quirk 2, it would have done 17,000 damage for <laughs> just his plus ultra 1 attack, and that's a pretty fancy combo if you ask me. Anyways, sorry this has been a really long one guys, but Miro is such an interesting in-depth character, with a lot- <laughs> You have to re-watch it, <laughs> I don't wanna- my, br my summary at the end is gonna be so long, basically gonna be re-watching the whole video. But basically he has a ton of really interesting counter-attacks that are very unique to him, and uh, his comboing is about average, unless you use supports, in which case the damage that he gets is above average. Uh, he can get good, easy, um, what's that called? Wall Splash if you use his Quirk 1, and you end his combos with Tilt Attack, Quirk 2 String, the most damage. He has a lot of interesting counter attacks. He has these, uh, like, fake out counter, this fake out counter attack if you hold the guard button. Uh, his counter attacks are very fast and obviously the best in the game since he's completely invincible while he does it. And you can cancel out of this unsafe. Uh, uh, quirk 1 move by pulling out a support. Which you can combo out of if your opponent isn't ready for it. Like just that. But, anyways, guys, that's Mirio in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. ちょっとごめんよ。大技だよね。それ。